first I want to give you uh, a little bit of um, how to stay out of court. I'm a big fan of, I, I do several uh, talks about how people can not have a housing court case. I also do, um, for HPD, every month I do a lecture at HPD to small landlords because I want them to know, okay, well, you know, in your country, it might be okay to do this, but it's not okay over here. So this is what the law is. So to try to keep the small landlords in line with what's going on, teach them good property management, because I think that's better for the tenants. And also, hey, you know, there's small homeowners, and you know, that's uh, they're the little guy too. It's the big landlords you got to watch out for. So you know, so we have to keep, uh, you know, have good practices to keep out of housing court. So I just wrote this up off the top of my head. And then when I looked at this list, I thought, boy, this list is really stupid because um, it's so obvious, you know? Um, so the problem is, is that I know how much trouble people get into when they fail to follow this fortune cookie advice. Right? Such as, keep all the documents to your residence. You have to live where you live. Does that mean you can't own a house someplace? Anybody? Okay, all right. I hear a few, but you guys are giving it to me at low volume, so I think that you, you're kind of doubtful about it. <laughs> okay, here's the deal. Um, we live in the United States of America, and you can own a house, and that's totally fine. <laughs> okay, so there's no limit. You can own 10 houses if you want. Um, but you must use your apartment as your what? Primary residence. Primary residence. Yeah. So, um, you must use that apartment as your primary residence. Your taxes, driver's license, social security stuff, and W-2s, bank statements, uh, must go to your primary residence, right? Um, now, you can have a house in New Jersey. If you have a house in New Jersey, you're gonna have a car in New Jersey. Why do you wanna have a car in New Jersey? Cheaper. Cheaper on the insurance, right? So you, uh, you want to have a car in New Jersey or Florida, right? If you have a car in Florida, insurance in Florida, what else are you going to have in Florida? Well, you got the house, right? But a driver's license. Often uh, when people have this kind of scenario, they'll have a driver's license in Florida. Um, and so these are things that I just have to deal with. I mean, in a situation like that, uh, when you, uh, the building gets transferred to a profit-oriented landlord, it is a, just a default response. They will sue you for non-primary residence. So people come in and go, yeah, I've got a house, car, insurance, and driver's license in Florida. I say, all right, we can deal with that. <laughs> because one follows the next. You got a house in Florida. There's no subway in Florida. So you need a vehicle. You have a vehicle in Florida. You're not going to get insurance in New York, you're going to get in Florida. So if you get insurance in Florida, you need a driver's license. That all makes sense. It all follows. But once you start saying, OK, no, I'm going to also move my taxes, my magazine subscriptions, my bank statements, my this, my that, and everything else, and uh, also I'm going to kennel my dog in Florida, or whatever, then, <laughs> then that's called abandoning your primary residence, right? So you got to play it smart. Now, there are some killer documents that if you have a certain document in another house, you're just going to be in trouble. You know, people always come to me and say, oh, yeah, th here, here's a scenario. You know, I've got a car in Florida, all this stuff, and we have to, you know, no case is the same. There's no, for at least for me, there's no formulas. So I don't care. You tell me that, okay, also you have, like, your ex-wife's German Shepherd is also in the house in Florida, or you keep your scuba gear in Florida, something else. You won't phase me. I, I can, uh, like court, is about telling a persuasive story, a story that makes sense, lines up, and meets the legal standard. And so there's always a problem. I can always work it out. 
And then they say, oh yeah, I also took a homestead tax abatement in Florida. I say, forget it, we're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> you can't take a homestead tax abatement unless it's your primary residence in that house, all right? And that's the same thing in New Jersey. Same thing in the state of New York. They call it, I think, the star tax abatement. Um, you cannot take a tax abatement saying you have a primary residence in a particular place and then say to another government agency your primary residence is in uh, the apartment. So no homestead tax abatements, right? Um, pay the taxes at, uh, with that home being your secondary residence. And uh, that is um, one of those killer documents. The other one, which I've only seen once used uh, effectively, is that uh, somebody decided to avail themselves of the public school system of Pennsylvania and also have a house there. And that's a no-no. You, you, you just cannot do that, you know, because, you know, you, you have to be a resident of the school district. You know, uh, people are paying taxes so, you know, people in that area could go to school. So if you, you know, if you, uh, if you like the school better and you send your, school, uh, your, your kid there, then, um, you know, of course you should be living there. You should be paying your taxes there. Um, and so, um, so that doesn't work. And there's uh, many things about primary residence you have to uh, be careful about, but in general, if you have all your documents going to your apartment, there's almost no way they can get you. So that's important. Documents, very important.